Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to or back to Making Mistakes with Mary with your host, Mary Cantalejo. So we have a special guest today. Hi, welcome. So do you want to just introduce yourself just a little bit before we get started? Definitely. Um, So my name is Kara Harms and I'm the gal behind Whimsy Soul, which is a lifestyle travel blog up here in San Francisco. I grew up in the Midwest and I ran away to California about five years ago and that's when I started blogging. It's been my full-time job for about two and a half years. I hired my husband on in 2018 and we now work full-time blogging together. Okay. So how are you doing like right now, current situation? Has anything changed or? Oddly enough, our day-to-day hasn't really changed because we've already been working together and we live in like a small studio in San Francisco. So we already were just like working side by side already before the pandemic hit. But, you know, as a travel heavy blog, we can't travel anywhere. So we've had to definitely pivot our content and kind of re-strategize very quickly, like how we're going to still connect with our audience, even though we can't you know, go on road trips all the time. So that's been a a struggle, but I think we tackled it pretty well. So yeah, it's not too bad. It could be worse. I'm glad that you're thinking like optimistic about the future because a lot of people like as soon as this pandemic like started, it's like, and we're under quarantine, people just shut down and not like think optimistically. Oh, it's so easy. Like it's been, I mean, the whole world isn't like a grief process right now. I know everyone's mental health is not the best, but you have to, you have to stay optimistic. (laughs) Okay, so before we jump into like your juicy lifestyle, it's normal here on the podcast to state your favorite beauty product at the moment. And if you don't have a favorite beauty product at the moment, just name any favorite product that you're currently obsessed with. Yeah, I mean, like aloe vera right now is my favorite beauty product because (laughs) I just got really sunburned and I'm pale skinned. But um, my favorite clean beauty brand is Evan Healy. So in the summer, I don't really wear a lot of makeup. So I just kind of like focus on the skincare. So that's what I've been jamming on lately. Is that brand solely like, is it for what type of skin type, like dry, oily? So they're actually also based in Southern California and they're all organic. So they have something kind of for everyone's skincare and makeup and it's all clean. So yeah. Cool. Okay. So before we start talking about your blog and the things you have accomplished from it, can you explain to anyone who's really new to your platform, what your main purpose is, what your main message is and like what type of content you present? Yeah. So um, our like motto is finding everyday magic. So I really think that if you have a positive outlook on life, there's little bits of joy in the mundane. So we really like to highlight that. So it could be a great cocktail recipe used to be traveling to places in your backyard. Paris is great, but there's so many amazing (laughs) adventures in the United States that you can go on that don't break the bank. We also have a very strong like body positive message too. So I shared a lot about my body journey and encourage women to feel confident in themselves. So that also applies to like curvy fashion and stuff like that. So we kind of are a lifestyle blog. We kind of tackle a lot of those things under that umbrella. But our joy, uh, our, we hope, I hope someone's can find something that <laughs> like there. <that. laughs> Before, when you first got started, like, did you mainly want to focus on traveling or was there a certain niche that you wanted to focus on? Great question. Yeah. Well, I started like five years ago and it was mostly fashion and a little bit of travel because I just moved to San Francisco. So I was really into exploring the Bay Area. Uh, um, and I also, fashion has always been a passion of mine. So I started out there, but we've kind of expanded a bit as the, as we have grown as people. So yeah. Okay. Favorite place you've traveled to? That one's so hard. Um, that it's just, the world is so beautiful, but honestly, like California is not my home state. It's my home now, but I'm constantly amazed by all like the crazy cool things here. (laughs) It's never like really appreciated enough. I think everyone goes to LA, um, or San Francisco, but there's hot springs. There's like (laughs) wineries. There's like little, like weird Airbnbs. There's just so many cool ghost towns. So I'm never part of California. Um, before quarantine, what was your normal work day from like morning to night? I'm like an early bird. So I like wake up at seven refreshed every day. Um, so I usually have like coffee and answer emails while watching Good Morning America, <laughs> low key old. Um, and then I'll take like a midday walk uh, and, you know, maybe see some friends in the evening. So the, really the only thing that's changed is like my friend hangs are now virtual. Um, but my <laughs> husband and I do a lot of traveling too. So we used to maybe like every couple of weeks go somewhere so that that's not included anymore but it really hasn't changed too much how is it like like how do you self-discipline yourself not to make sure that you don't go on social media in the morning now that you're like your own boss and you know you're doing things at home now 
Um, I don't know. I mean, like I do go on social media right away in the morning. Like that's when I catch up on like DMs and stuff. But um, I have, it's just like my personality type. Have you uh, heard of the Enneagram test? No, I haven't. Look that up after that. Um, It's kind of like a Myers-Briggs, but an updated version. So I'm a type three, which is low-key a workaholic, but I've just always had like that inner drive to stay focused. So it's never really been hard for me. Um, But I do use lists a lot. So in the morning, I'll write down what I want to do that day and like cross-reference back to that. Um, But I don't know, working is just... (laughs) In your bio, you state that you've moved across the country and to an unknown place that you've never really been before and try to get stable in a new state. How was it like? I mean, like how, what sparked you to move across the country? Um, I mean, I went, so I grew up in Wisconsin. I went to college in Minneapolis and it was after graduation and I like knew I didn't want to be in Minneapolis anymore. It's a great city, but I just needed a change and the winters are so cold, Mary, so cold. (laughs) So, um, it was back then I really thought I wanted to work in an ad agency actually, or something in social media. So kind of just looking at the cities with a lot of job opportunities and the Bay has so many because not only are there ad agencies, but tech companies and startups. So um, didn't really know a lot about it and just kind of figured, <laughs> yes, let's, let's go do that. Um, and it sort of worked out. So how come, um, did you ever have like the option to move to New York City or you really had your heart set for the Bay Area? Uh, I actually like never really thought about San Francisco up until I like we like decided to move here. Um, It was just kind of always in the background. I grew up with like a picture of New York City above my bed. I always thought I was going, I had visions of myself being like Carrie Bradshaw and like cute outfits, walking (laughs) down, you know, like the street. Um, And then when it became time for that, my choice, it just, it just didn't feel right a little bit because of the weather, but I also um, at my heart, I'm like a country girl. So I knew I wanted something that has like a little more nature. So uh, that's why California kind of appealed to me. That's why I love the Bay Area is you can take hikes. I live near Golden Gate Park, which is bigger than Central Park. It's so easy to get out in nature while still being in a metro. So it it worked out. It was the perfect fit, even though I never really thought about it. (laughs) So if you had to choose which weather would you say is the best, like if you had to choose to live in Wisconsin or the Bay Area for the rest of your life, where would you live? Like considering everything, like home, like weather wise, like what do you think? I ask myself this all the time, especially <laughs> now I have so many friends that like in light of the pandemic are moving. They're like, screw it. We can buy a house somewhere else. We can work <laughs> remotely. Um, it's so hard. Wisconsin's very cold, but I do miss the four seasons a lot. So as we talked about before we started recording, the fog is now rolling into San Francisco. We had a heat wave after like during Memorial Day holiday weekend, sunshine, but we're about to enter like three months of fog where I won't see the sunshine. So um, that does bum me out. Um, you know, cost of living is very high high here so I don't know if we'll be able to afford a house out here I don't know we also want maybe want to live abroad I don't know where we'll end up but somewhere (laughs) there's good goods and bads to everyone (laughs) especially living in San Francisco like if anyone were to ask you to like if anyone were to travel to San Francisco best place to definitely eat in the city I, my favorite bakery is called Le Mara's Bakery. It's French and they have food too. And it's, they're such like the cutest couple. Um, the husband is, grew up in France, so it's like authentic. And they have a few locations around the city, very Instagrammable. The food's fantastic. So I always like to steer people there. And if you had one place to recommend in San Francisco, one place that anyone should visit and it's great, it's amazing, what would you suggest? Um, I love Golden Gate Park. There's like <laughs> shit hidden in here. There's bison in the park. There's like waterfalls, Dutch <laughs> meals, like like cool light, like art spaces. So I don't think enough tourists get to the west side of the city. So I always like to people get people to come out to the park and see it. And I think we've talked about this before, but being your own boss, like there's a lot of self discipline. Like where does this all get started? Um, well, I had a good role model growing up. So my mom uh, started her own graphic design business when I was very, very young. So she was working from home basically since 
I could remember. So uh, it was really nice seeing her growing up, setting herself a schedule, like keeping on task while also being active in the family too. So it was really nice to be able to like be around that environment. So it felt very natural to me to kind of start my own business. And I knew how to keep myself on track because I watched someone growing up doing that. So I think that was definitely a big help. Um, I think you already answered this, but who or what influenced you to start within this industry? Yeah, well, definitely my mom, like, definitely taught me that I could do anything I wanted to. I could start my own businesses. Uh, In terms of, like, starting blogging, uh, honestly, like, I moved here, and have you heard of the blogger Gal Needs Glam? She used to be very big in San Francisco. Now she's based on the East Coast. So um, before, I remember following her on Instagram and kind of seeing, like, I think I see what you're doing, girl. Like, I think I could, like, this is an industry I never thought about. But, like, she was first introduction to me that blogging could be a career and existed. So, yeah. Did you ever get scared that there's too much competition when you first started or not really? Oh man. So I started in like February, 2015 and the world, like the internet world was just so different back then. It was very easy to quickly grow. It felt very quiet. Not a lot of people were on the blogging and influencing train yet. So it was easy to feel confident because you could grow 5,000 followers in a week, which is just very unrealistic (laughs) now. Um, I definitely feel that way. Like these days, sometimes I firmly believe that like everyone has a voice and a platform, but it's so much harder to start now just because there's so much more noise. Did you have um, a normal five to five, uh, nine to five job before starting your blog? And if so, how did you get attracted to the blogging lifestyle? Yeah, so I came out here and I started blogging as a hobby, but I still had to pay all my crazy bills out here in the rent. So I worked in social media for startups for a while. And then I ended up at um, a startup where I was in influencer marketing, actually, and doing their social media. So I got to do that for my real job and my side hobby side by side. So um, yeah, that whole company kind of had like a leadership shift and I got laid off because my position got moved out of state. So I didn't choose to blog full time as soon as I I did. It was kind of made for me. But in, in hindsight, it was like a blessing in disguise. Were you scared to like start or like have to like rely on your blog for financial stability? Oh, totally. Like rent in San Francisco is crazy. The cost of living <laughs> here is so high. Like the stakes are very high. If I was still living in Wisconsin, I, I'm pretty sure I could find an, a great apartment for like $500 a month and our rent is like $2,500 a month up here. So it felt scary because, you know, we're, my husband and I are trying to be financially independent grown up. So it was definitely, it was hard, but um, it worked, it kept working out. So, and it keeps working out. So we're just like kind of riding, riding the wave. Did you ever like search up like well I know that you moved across the country but when you were in Wisconsin did you ever like look up anything about San Francisco like about the rent prices you just moved yeah well I knew it was expensive a lot of people w- were like did you know it's expensive there when I <laughs> I'm moving? um but no it was just something I never thought about really at all <laughs> very very like I honestly pulled open a map of California and I was like hey do you want to <laughs> LA my husband's like no I was like how about San Francisco he's like sure and that's kind of how the (laughs) decision was made (laughs) how are you not afraid to like leave your family and leave your friends behind to go to a brand new city no like as a teenager I I did some like reckless shit I'm not gonna lie (laughs) just like when you're young you can be bold and like you nothing scares you in the same way that things scare me now so uh like I would travel like to foreign countries by myself and things like that so it was it felt very it felt easy you know so um when you're young it's you have to take those risks because you you can (laughs) (laughs) favorite foreign place that you actually traveled to um well I studied abroad in Rome when I was in college so like Rome Mm -hmm. is a really cool city that a lot it's kind of like New York it's really big it gets some hate sometimes but I think it's like a really really cool (laughs) It's lots of history. Very beautiful. Yeah, I went to Rome over the summer, not for educational purposes, just for vacation. But uh, yeah, it was such a beautiful city, but it's so hot. I don't know when you traveled, but it was tremendously hot. I was about to say, like, everyone thinks that they should go to Italy in the summer, but like people don't have AC there and it gets so humid in the fall. (laughs) Like that's the best time or like the springtime. Yeah. 
it hit hard because we were like staying at a cafe and like all they had were like mini fans like it wasn't actually ac it was just mini fans and people there were so used to it so it was like it was nothing to them yeah and then like the buses and trains get so packed yeah. oh my god and like to make sure that everything's like right in front of you just to make sure that like no one was taking anything especially being in a touristy area pickpockets are very very bad over there i never got pickpocketed a lot of my classmates <laughs> did i was like very on top of that but yeah it, it gets hate for that and then stuff like that but it's so pretty there and the food's fantastic yeah. Like, the architecture there is incredible. Like, I loved it there. Gorgeous. It was, it was just so hard to walk on, like, the pebble area. Like, <laughs> I made the mistake of bringing some, like, heels because oh I had God. a <laughs> vision of, you know, like, being chic in Italy, like, wearing heels and dresses. But you can't walk around in heels in Rome. So I – it was hard because you only get a little bit of suitcase. Yeah. Around, I regretted wasting it on heels. <laughs> It's like, especially if you have wedges, like, I feel like you're just gonna, you're so unbalanced. Oh, yeah. I don't know how the, like, <laughs> do it. I gave up very quickly. <laughs> so did you have anyone who helped you to create your first blog or was it all on just Google itself? Um, I mean, like, my husband, Robin, was, like, here along the way, like, every step to, like, kind of brainstorm ideas. But in terms of, like, practically like building it it was all just me uh like growing up we had myspace like so we all learned how to code like my generation knows like a low level of code because we all <laughs> did it for like customizing our myspace pages um and i studied like graphic design and like art in school so it was pretty easy for me to like quickly get it up um because i had that background knowledge just from like being a nerd so <laughs> it was pretty easy but um yeah i use i was on squarespace first and then i moved it over to wordpress eventually since you had social media and you had it at like a younger age like do you think that's what influenced you to be within the social media industry probably like i was already used to sharing like now that you say it used to sharing my life on facebook and my space for a while so um it didn't feel out abnormal for me yeah like um oh sorry hold up <laughs> how did you learn how to create a website for yourself like like adding cool features a domain name like who like taught you how to do all of that I honestly can't remember like one specific person but I do remember my mom sending me to some like coding camp as a kid where we like built <laughs> websites and I probably took like classes in college or high school where they kind of dabbled here and there and then I was able to bring those skills together but it was also a lot of like watching YouTube tutorials and figuring out things so um yeah you you can learn it yourself it's not terribly hard but I don't know <laughs> I mean everything's on Google these days like everything yeah and it's like kind of sad because it's like I, in school like I don't want to diss my school but um a lot of the time like we are required to order textbooks but most of the time we could just find the textbook online and like the pdf version of it online are bullshit i sorry i feel like i'm swearing a lot on your podcast no, it's, like, it's, it's, it's cool <laughs> i've actually so i'm on tiktok now very obsessed with it oh and my <laughs> seeing a lot of like students share how like you guys never have to pay for textbooks so you can get yeah <laughs> screw you i had to drop thousands <laughs> on textbooks so yeah it's like you can get everything online now <laughs> it's crazy like all you need to do is go in the sketchy website it's kind of sketchy but um it didn't seem like it would be harm and i actually found my textbook i was like this can't be can't be it. i bought a 200 hundred dollar textbook for one of my ap like i took ap bio this year so i had to buy 200 hundred dollar textbook because the school the, the school didn't require it but college board required it like the place where you know scamming students but um um two hundred dollars and i found it online for free and i was like are you serious <laughs> well our my generation's version of that was streaming music off of limewire and like movies off of mega uh oh i heard about that but it was a lot of like hoping it wasn't gonna destroy your computer and watching like janky, janky <laughs> videos and stuff but there's, there's a way around everything <laughs> I remember I would see those on Vine and like people would be like, okay, here, here, like hope and Tumblr when like Tumblr used to be like a big thing. Well, Tumblr is still a big thing, but like when it, I was still obsessed with Tumblr, I would see those things. It had, a, it had its moment a while back. Yeah. <laughs> 
So where do you find your inspiration for your blog posts? Like you talk about like traveling and stuff, but where do you find these specific places to travel? Like where's this inspiration coming from? Honestly, like I, I will sometimes like open up a map and just start like zooming in on cities (laughs) and like deciding if they're cool or not. Like that's how I find a lot of the smaller towns. Um, Also, I follow a lot of other like travelers so sometimes they go to a place and like that looks cool let's go there so um really it's just a lot of like investigative report like researching basically I feel like in this age like I also just see on TikTok like I hate to say (laughs) like all these travel people like they have like these small areas in California I didn't know about this huge swing I don't know if you've seen it on TikTok there's this huge swing on the beach and it's very private but it's hard to get down there because it's very steep and there's just a huge swing like on the beach (laughs) so cool there's oh wait I mean there's a few swings in California that I know of the Bay Area is famous for having like seven swings that people (laughs) keep cutting down like the old people cut them down but the oh use my putting gosh. them back up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a funny battle. Yeah. But yeah, there's so many cool things that I learned from social media just from others. So yeah. I mean there's a I don't know if you've seen the apple one where they like bite into the apple juice thing, like the cup and it sounds like <laughs> I forgot what the brand was called. It's Martinelli's. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that one. <laughs> There's yeah. just so many great cool apple things. juice by the way. <laughs> yeah. But I someone had to bite into that like that product and be like wow this sounds like an apple (laughs) (laughs) there's just like new things that you can learn and like obviously within your content like people are learning and it's great like how do you feel about like other people learning from your page like you learn from other people's pages and now like you're sharing your content and other people are learning how do you feel about that Oh, it feel. I mean, like, it's the best feeling. Like, when I get DMs <laughs> from women telling me that, like, you know, they read a body positive post and, like, they feel better about themselves or, like, they feel seen. Or people who are just like, I made your cocktail and it was bomb. And I'm just like, I love <laughs> that. Um, or when people say, like, I copied your exact itinerary on this, like, trip and it was amazing. It feels great. I think a lot of creators think that they always have to reinvent the wheel. But it's really just, like, the things that you do every day somebody might not do and it's just sharing that i think i actually to bring it back to tiktok because things like (laughs) the sharing platform is so small like i've been going back to the very basics like how do i like braid my hair at night that's something that a lot of it makes it very curly without any hot tools and that's something that i've been doing for at least like 15 years and i didn't think anyone would think that's interesting (laughs) so many people don't know about that so it's really just the little the little simple things um, it's where I like try to find my inspiration. So, yeah. What would you say is the most terrifying thing about being an influencer yourself? Terrifying. I mean, like putting yourself out there can be really hard because there's so many trolls. I'm pretty good about <laughs> feel- feeling that and like not getting effective, but it is hard when you're like putting your entire life out there. Um, and then not everyone's going to agree with you and people are like, very easy to hate online. So I think that's probably the hardest um, like personally. And then of course, like running a business, it's running a business. It's, you give all the unsexy things that nobody talks about, like the <laughs> pumping and like follow, chasing people for payments and like reading contracts and all like the nitty gritty stuff is also like not glamorous. <laughs> Do you have any favorite brands you've worked with? Oh yeah. So we have some really favorite brand partners. Grove Collaborative is like a really fantastic team. Love their products. They're very, very nice. Um, who else? Uh, hers for hims and for hers is a really fantastic company that they have a lot of wellness products, but they also have things like free therapy. If you want to go check it out. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Those are the two off the top of my head. I can probably rave a lot more later, but for me, <laughs> it's really like it's less about the product and more about the people behind it. There's like there's some brands that I've like worked with them that on the front they seem like really cool brands, but the people I talk to are like not great people. So <laughs> I've definitely like changed my like view of brands like that. So I really like to support the ones where like the people behind the brand are actually really cool too. And it's like they love the brand, too. They're not just working for the company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you plan your posts like ahead of time? And how far back do you plan? So my content calendar for different platforms are like pretty different. For blog posts, I try to schedule them out like a week ahead just so it's done. They take more time. I'm constantly changing what I want to post on Instagram. So I use an app called Plan so I can kind of like drag things around. And if I change my mind, um, I can switch things up and then for tiktok usually i just kind of 
make everything <laughs> on Sundays and then I schedule them out throughout the week. So I'll make like 20 videos on one day and just kind of like slowly release those. I feel like doing TikToks is like a workout. I don't know if that's just me. <laughs> I don't dance, so I can't dance. But like the few times I tried to make the dance, like the savage dance, yeah. I was sweating by the end of it. I still wasn't very good at doing it. So I quickly realized like dancing's not for me. <laughs> like it's, it's just learning the dance itself is such a struggle because it's like then you're recording and you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot. Like <laughs> you have to go back and watch it and then like then you forget again and you're like, OK, I give up. It's so hard. I think it took me like two hours to learn that dance and I still wasn't very good at it because I'm not recording <laughs> it at all. <laughs> Don't know how Charlie does it. She's a machine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you. Pl oh, sorry. Hold up. Do you have any favorite bloggers that motivate you to keep on going every single day? Yeah, so I'm really lucky and I have some girlfriends who are bloggers here in the city that uh, we have like a Slack channel and we talk a lot every day to like support and share each other. So um, Elise of What the Fab, her Instagram handle is WTFAB. Uh, my friend Jen of Jennifer Rose blog, who does like California travel. Uh, those two ladies are just fantastic like support systems. Have you hired anyone for your company? And if not, are you going to start hiring or... Yeah, we don't have any full-time like employees right now other than my husband and myself. But over the years, we've had like hired people for like some one-off projects. Like we hired someone to redo our whole branding a few years ago. And I've had people pitch for me sometimes and doing like VA work and stuff. So we have a small team of people doing like little tasks here and there. I should probably hire out more. I'm just a control freak, so it's hard. <laughs> Anyone from your Instagram can see that you're extremely confident and within your platform as well. You're so confident. How do you build that confidence? Was that in you already or would you say grew over time? I would say it definitely grew. Like, again, I started in a like in a quieter age of Instagram. So it was like easier to like dip my toe and like run with it. But honestly, like taking photos of yourself every single day for five years just like builds up confidence so like that's usually my recommendation I tell people especially people who are struggling with body image like make an account it doesn't have to be public but just take a photo of yourself every day and within a year you're going to start seeing yourself and like being like yes I, I, I slay so yeah how do you get comfortable in front of a camera like uh, taking photos with yourself I mean like sometimes I look at myself I'm like okay yeah I'm not not today I, like I think it's really just like again like I'm constantly staring at myself like whether it's through like the selfie por portrait or like on the backside, and I just have gotten really used to and used to comfortable comfortable knowing like that's me I also worked as a wedding photographer um, in college and I would was always so confused when brides would ask me to photoshop them thinner and I was always like you look stunning like I do not need to photoshop your body to look different <laughs> and I thought about that a lot when I would nitpick myself in photos and I'm like I someone else is probably seeing something very different it's almost like body dysmorphia so you have to kind of like check yourself and get past that and it, it works it's it's hard it takes it takes a while but eventually you can like move past that since you're so comfortable in front of the camera have you ever like thought about creating a youtube channel or oh, okay <laughs> subscribers um in quarantine I'm it's I have more time to post to it. YouTube videos just take so long, like so long <laughs> to film and to edit. So um, it's hard doing a blog and Instagram and a YouTube TikTok. and a TikTok <laughs> and like running a business and having a personal life. So <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Are you gonna start getting getting back into it like now under quarantine or not really? Just I I like started off really strong in quarantine. I was making like a few YouTube videos a week, and I sort of like dropped off a bit as things have gotten <laughs> really back to normal it's probably gonna always be a channel i'll like have bursts like spirit sporadic bursts of creativity on it's just hard <laughs> if you could describe your job in five words what would it be and why i like share inspiration for other women i guess <laughs> is that four words five um that's a hard one but yeah <laughs> And then students feel the pressure on a day-to-day -day basis as like anyone would feel pressure with their day-to-day -day jobs and end up failing sometimes. What would you say is the best way to deal with that like great failure? I mean, I, it's so hard, but just 
knowing that like failure does not define you. Like I fail all the time and you just have to like pick up and keep going. And it can be hard sometimes when failures are very public or especially when you're in teen, like a teen and there's some like really like big things like grades can lead to different colleges, which can lead yeah. to different life paths. Like it is like higher stakes, but I, I don't know. I have a, like a firm belief, belief that the universe like guides you to get a little spiritual. So you just have to like know that whatever you're doing is like your path that's meant for you. And if you fail, you have to just pick up and try again. Um, and it will eventually work out. Do you remember your high school experience? Like, do you remember what like got you through high school? Well, I was kind of like a nerd. So I was in like, I was like a theater kid and I was in a lot of groups and stuff like the business clubs. So I definitely had like a nice small core group of friends to, to lean on. Um, but like what got me through, I don't know. I just like, I loved, as you can tell, I love to travel and I always <laughs> like could see myself not living in a small town. So also knowing that soon I'd be able to choose my own life was definitely like a very like guiding force. Like I understood I have to follow the rules until I'm 18 and then I can start deciding things for myself. So that was always a really nice thing to keep me motivated. <laughs> what would you say was the most like, stressful time you had in high school? Stressful. Honestly, probably like junior year because yeah. I was having for like the ACTs um, and applying for colleges. And I feel like that's when your hormones are the highest. And that was when our like prom was like my high school had our prom for juniors, like not seniors. So you also had like the, the whole romance uh, thing that you're figuring out. And it was like a lot of like a lot of all the feelings for sure. It's like definitely everywhere. And like now I want to say I dodged a bullet because I'm a junior and so I definitely like dodged it because it's like now I was doing everything at home. So I had extra time. So it's like I definitely dodged it. And then the fact that we're at home all the time, I don't have to take the SAT or the ACT. I took my SAT. I got a bad score. But um, Tesh should be like banned. But like it's just I mean, they're getting sued at this point. So <laughs> yeah, I took mine a few times for sure. <laughs> like I'm definitely nervous through the application process like do you have any helpful tips for anyone who's going to go through the application process as well man I'm trying to remember so I graduated high school in 2010 so it's been like a good 10 years since I filled out a college application <laughs> but I knew right away like the school I really wanted to go to and I was lucky that I was able to get to it but I also applied to a lot of backup colleges and you can also know like it's totally fine to go to a different college for a couple of years and then transfer to your dream school. You can save a lot of money that way. Um, and also like, I know that colleges are much more willing to accept transferees versus like freshmen coming in. So um, if you, if it doesn't work out for you freshman year, for whatever reason, you can always, always try again. What would you say is one thing you definitely regret that you didn't do in high school? So I saw that on your question thing and I'm like, damn, I was like an overachiever. I feel like I did all the <laughs> things. Honestly, maybe slow down a bit. Sometimes I think back to how age 17 is like the perfect age because you have a lot of responsibilities, but you also don't have to worry about bills yet, assuming that you are in a privileged state. Like you don't have to worry about your rent or like working a job if you didn't want to. Like not only was I in all the clubs, but I had part-time jobs and stuff since I was like 14. And sometimes I'm like, I should have chilled out a little bit more. <laughs> um, but other than that, like take the risk now, because in that same vein of thought, like it's, there's zero, there's low risk if you fail. So now it's like a good time to start trying something because you still have your parents to help you financially and like friends and like a, a home and everything. How did you like have the grind, like, you know, the grind factor? Because like, definitely in high school, I'm like, okay, senioritis is coming through. Like, I'm trying to make sure I don't get senioritis. I definitely got it, like, so uh, the second semester of senior year. Um, I mean, it helped that I had, like, also, like, nerdy, overachieving friends. So we would just kind <laughs> of, like, motivate slash, like, be in competition with each other a lot. <laughs> Probably wasn't always healthy, but I felt, like, internal pressure to, you know, please my parents and get good grades. So definitely not healthy in all points in time but it worked <laughs> I totally feel that like my friend she took the SAT the first time and I feel like I think the scoring was a little different before but she was near perfect when she took it and she didn't study at all for it like she didn't she was just forced to take it and she found out the day before the exam that she was taking it I'm like low-key that kind of person where I didn't really study <laughs> for that, so I just kind of like roll with it <laughs> it was just like 
like it's like my group I wouldn't say that we're like that nerdy but they're definitely smart and so it was like they didn't try so then like everyone else has a constant pressure to like keep trying like all my friends are taking like honors and AP classes like five APs next year and I'm taking three so it's like the constant like pressure and battle between it but we're still really good friends yeah (laughs) oh yeah totally I definitely I mean like I had the quote-unquote smarter friends of mine too (laughs) we're taking even more AP classes and we're on like honor roll and stuff but um like it also that doesn't matter like my husband didn't even like go to college up until we moved here and I made him like finish community college like it's also like it's hard to think about it when you're in that in that world but at the end of the day like grades in school don't always matter so it, it's sometimes hard to like remember that when all of your friends aren't studying and acing the ACTs or the SATs but it, it works out okay so lastly what makes you a hashtag girl boss oh man I mean I like to think that any woman who doesn't take no for an answer is a girl boss so like whatever that means for herself Cool. Okay. So now that we finished all the basic questions, I have one more thing to do, one more task. So we are going to hit this lightning round. So you have one minute to answer as many questions as you can as possible. These questions have nothing pertaining to your job whatsoever. Nothing about the blog, nothing about entrepreneurship, nothing about that. Because I think that your favorite ice cream flavor can say a lot about their person, like a person. So love it. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Any pets? Uh, my cat, Twyla. She has a fluffy tail. I love her. Best animal? Cats. <laughs> Best brand you know out there? Best brand? I mean, I love Target. <laughs> Target's the grass. Best superpower? Best superpower? Uh, being invisible? Weirdest lie you told? The weirdest lie I told? Uh, probably about hiding my sister's candy or like not eating my sister's candy like something like that (laughs) what life skills are rarely taught but extremely useful communication i feel like it's hard to have good communication and that's very very useful what makes you roll your eyes every time you hear it oh when like i don't know let's skip this one i'll come back 10 seconds what are the cure for hiccups Oh, sk- <laughs> drinking water upside down. <laughs> but funniest person you know? Oh, uh, myself. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I make myself laugh all the time. <laughs> okay, there you go. That was, well, that was the lightning round. I don't know. I feel like that's just the best way to get to know someone. <laughs> uh, no, I dig it. I'm, I'm bad at those because I, I, I have a tendency to talk a lot. So those are hard <laughs> for me to like, think on my feet. <laughs> Okay, but you did it and hopefully that wasn't too stressful. But thank you so much for being on today's podcast episode. I really do appreciate it. And I hope, you know, you come back again soon. (laughs) Thanks for having me, Mary. This has been fun. So before we are out, do you want to tell them where they can find you, contact you? Yeah, so uh, my website is whimsysoul.com. On Instagram, I'm the whimsy soul. On TikTok, just whimsy soul. It's a pretty unique word. You can find me. (laughs) 